Okay, welcome to the Orangeburg Board of Commissioners regular meeting June the 4th. At this time, I will ask the city clerk, Beth Cecil, to please call the roll. Commissioner Jeff Sanford. Here. Commissioner Larry Condor. Here. Mayor Tom Watson. Here. Mayor Pro Tim Larry Magliner. Here. Commissioner Pam Smithwright. Here. Thank you, Beth. At this time, uh, we'll have the invocation and pledge of allegiance to the flag. I invite you to pray with me in the manner which you're most comfortable. O loving and gracious Lord, we come before you tonight with a humble and contrite heart. We thank you for all the blessings, all the gifts of love, kindness, health, and forgiveness, just to name a few. As we prepare to conduct business on behalf of all the citizens of Orangeboro, we are reminded that without your wisdom and kindness, we would wander meaninglessly without purpose. And our purpose is to serve. While I understand not all decisions we make are pleasing to everyone, so we pray that the decisions will be for the good of all our community, not just for a few. I pray tonight's meeting will be civil and respectful, and if there are votes taken, they will be done with honesty and integrity and with confidence that the outcome will be for the good of all. Please place your hand on the shoulder of all those that run into danger and protect us and keep us safe. We say a special prayer for the Waller family and, w and want them to know how blessed we are to have them with us tonight. We ask all this in God's name, amen. Amen. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> that pledge sounds good with all the people in here, doesn't it? Okay, the first item on the agenda is uh, will be a presentation to the family of Stephen Waller. Um, I'll give you a little introduction uh, of the Car Carnegie or Carnegie, however you want to say it. Hero Fund Commission. It was established April 15th, 1904 by Andrew Carnegie. The Carnegie Hero Fund Commission was created to recognize outstanding acts of selfless heroism performed in the United States and Canada. The commission awards a Carnegie Medal to those who risk their lives to an extraordinary degree while saving or attempting to save lives of others. At this time, we'll have a little short video to give you a little bit more explanation of the Carnegie. Andrew Carnegie's father sang to the west, to the west, to his son as they sailed over seven weeks from dire times in Scotland to New York and on to Pennsylvania. Eager to help the family's financial situation, 13-year-old Andrew quickly advanced from cotton mill worker to messenger to telegraph operator to a prominent railroad manager by age 24. Tireless, innovative, and a keen investor at the peak of the industrial age, Andrew Carnegie will become the wealthiest self-made man of all time. But the man who dies thus rich dies disgraced, reasoned Carnegie, who also pioneered modern philanthropy by donating nearly his entire fortune to establishing institutions for peace, education, culture, science, and the arts. Deeply inspired by heroic acts at a devastating coal mine explosion in 1904, Carnegie would immediately create the Hero Fund Commission. It was such an extraordinary idea that Grandpa Nagy, my great-grandfather Andrew Carnegie, had. We're here over 100 years after our founding because Andrew Carnegie recognized a constant in the human character, which was the potential for heroic action. This is one of the cases that I did that the board's looking at. She was going to jump off the, um, the a bridge over the Hood Canal. As she jumped, he was able to grab a hold of her arms. It's meaningful work, and I think uh, I could probably speak on behalf of all the members of the staff at the commission that um, it's very much taken to heart. 
um, with those two, two sole purposes in mind established by Andrew Carnegie, to recognize heroes and to support them and their dependents so that neither the hero nor their dependents suffer as a result of their selfless act. Everyone who reads these cases wonders to themselves, why did, the, why did the rescuer do it and would I have done it? And I tell people, don't be in any hurry to find out because these are truly frightening events. They, they do stay with you and they come back to you. One of the cases that I thought was so extraordinary, a young boy who was maybe six or seven fell into the river. Another boy, Alec Justin Smith, had the presence of mind, I mean, can you imagine, had the presence of mind to run down the bank of the river, clung onto a boulder, reached out and caught this child 15 feet before the edge. They both would have been killed. Some of the heroes and rescues that stick with me are when a very young person puts their life on the line for someone else. I think of Ashley Aldridge, who at only 19 years old, a mother of two young children, responded to assist an elderly gentleman who was caught in his wheelchair on the railroad track. And I think of Kira Larson, who tragically lost her life at 10 years old, rescuing a two-year-old child from a runaway vehicle. Those cases stick with me and I think always will. Shortly, the Hero Fund Commission, with the support of so many friends and colleagues, will make presentation of its 10,000th and 10,001st medals. This number is but a fraction of the nominated cases, around 100,000 in the Commission's 114-year history. Despite the obstacles, the danger, the fear, the self-doubt, they did it, very often for complete strangers. They cared enough to risk all. The Hero Fund Commission remains committed to see that they are recognized and supported, and just as importantly, that their stories are told. Came upon a police officer on the right side, there was something wrong, there was something going on. I saw a subject that was slumped over the wheel. I got the uh, subject out, he um, snapped, and the next thing I know, he's reaching for my gun, and he's he about to kill me right here on the spot. Nobody knew that I was fighting on the side of the road for my life. She pulls up, you know, I get chills right now thinking about it. Um, the next thing I remember feeling was her hand come across my hand grabbing hold to his hand and peeling it off of my gun. Didn't have no time to be afraid. It wasn't, it wasn't enough room. Just reach out. Just a minute of your time, it could make a big difference. It could save someone's life. Um, it was just an average day at work. I didn't know what was, was happening until I looked outside. I noticed a fire extinguisher on the wall, so I grabbed it. I just had this feeling of someone needed to be rescued. Just, it's an inferno, like you can't, I don't understand how, you know, how I'm gonna be able to do this. When I initially pulled him out um, and he started rolling, I was like, he's gonna be all right, he's gonna make it. Once we got him in the bay and uh, they started working on him to try to revive him, um, I was able to walk in and, and I put my hand on his chest and I just uh, just wanted to make sure he was okay. But um, at that point, he had already expired. Patrick was a hero himself, uh, being a Purple Heart recipient. It's definitely an honor to, uh, to be a part of this group. Just the legacy that, that it instills and that it has instilled since 1904, since it came around. There's, there's a, lot of, a lot of heroes before me and there's a lot to come after me. And at this time, we'd like to call Carnegie heroes Vicki Tillman and Jimmy Rhodes to receive their Carnegie Awards. For me, an act of heroism is the ultimate recognition by one person of the equality of another. In our country, we tell people that all men are created equal. 
But every rescue by one of our heroes is a demonstration by action of that principle. My great-grandfather talking to a lot of folks that knew Stephen better than I, the last thing out of their mouth all the time was, man, well, he was a, such a good guy. You know, and I don't think people need to understand that. So, and I also believe that, I like the song, that heaven has holes in its floor. And Stephen's watching everything that's going on just to make sure he's in your heart and in your mind. So at this time, I won't be able to look at you while I'm doing this, so I'm going to have to turn this way. I'm going to read a proclamation on behalf of the city of Owensboro, all the commissioners, all the employees, all the retirees. We're at Stephen B. Waller, 47, and Bradley Eugene Murphy, 21, both died on October 9, 2017, rescue in the Gulf Shores, Alabama. And whereas a 12-year-old boy was playing in rough surf, in the Gulf of Mexico when a riptide carried him 100 feet from shore in water over his head. A and whereas, waves up to five feet high were break breaking close to shore when the boy's mother asked Mr. Waller, an IT manager, and Mr. Murphy, a landscaper, to help. With a boogie board, Stephen Waller entered the water, swam to the boy, placing him on the board. And whereas Stephen began pushing the board towards the shore, but a breaking wave separated the two, and Mr. Waller was carried further and further from shore. The boy's mother, also using a boogie board, reached her son and guided him back to shore. Whereas Bradley Murphy, who had also entered the water, swam toward Mr. Waller and appeared to reach him before both men submerged. The boy was examined by medics but was not injured. Rescuers recovered Stephen and Bradley Murphy later and that they had drowned. Whereas the brave actions of Stephen B. Waller saved the life of a young boy and truly defined what is meant to be a hero. Now therefore I, Thomas H. Watson, Mayor of the City of Orangeboro, do hereby proclaim June the 4th, 2019, at Stephen B. Waller Day in Owensboro, Kentucky, and encourage all citizens to join in recognizing and honoring the brave and heroic actions of Stephen B. Waller. Would you come forward, please? How you doing? I'm okay. <laughs> okay, good for you. I'm about to fall over. <sighs> I want to present this medal, and it's not something you win. This is a medal you earn, what you did. The Carnegie Medal. You have the Carnegie Thank you all. Is it on? Is it on? Can you hear me? It's a great honor to accept the Carnegie Hero Award on behalf of the, my late husband, Steve Waller. He was a hero to all of us, and he always will be. And like the mayor said, I know he's watching down and looking at us right now. And so, Steve, this is for you. We love you. We're so proud of you. Thank you.
Okay, the next item on the agenda is item 4B. It's another proclamation I'll read, um, and it will be mailed. Um, it's for Men's Health Month. City of Orangeboro does hereby proclaim, whereas despite advances in medical technology and research, men continue to live an average of five years less than women, with Native American and African American men having the lowest life expectancy. Whereas educating the public and health care providers about the importance of a healthy lifestyle and early detection of male health problems will result in reducing rates of mortality from disease. And whereas men, <laughs> bless you, who are educated about the value that preventive health can play in prolonging their lifespan and their role as productive family members will be more likely to participate in health screenings. And whereas Fathers who maintain a healthy lifestyle are role models for their children and have happier, healthier children. And whereas the Men's Health Network worked with Congress to develop a national men's health awareness period as a special campaign to develop educate, and educate men and boys and their families about the importance of positive health attitudes and preventive health practices. Whereas the citizens of Orangeboro encouraged to increase awareness of importance of a li healthy lifestyle regular exercise, and a medical checkups. Now, therefore, I, Thomas Hart Watson, Mayor of the City of Orangeboro, do hereby proclaim June 2019 as Men's Health Month in Orangeboro and encourage all citizens to pursue preventive health practices and early detection efforts. Signed and sealed this fourth day of June 2019. This will be mailed. Okay. Next item on the agenda is uh, item 5A to consider approval of minutes dated May 14, 2019, May 17, 2019, May 21, 2019. I'll make a motion to approve. Could I have a second, please? Second. <coughs> okay. Any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 I'll, oppo I'll oppose. Motion carries. Item 5B, consider the board appointments. Uh, Senior Community Center of Orangeboro and Davis County appoint D.J. Johnson to a three-year term expiring December the 31st, 2021. And the Dugan Best Neighborhood Alliance reappoint Andrea Johnson to a term expiring August the 1st, 2020. Um, could I'll make a motion to approve. Could I have a second, please? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. Item six on the agenda is second reading. These will be roll call votes. Councilor, item 6A. Thank you, Mayor. Commissioners, oh. Ordinance 9-2019, an ordinance adopting and approving the annual budget of the City of Orangeboro, Kentucky, for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2019 and ending June 30th, 2020, and appropriating the revenues to the various departments of the city as set forth herein. Public read for approval on second reading this fourth day of June, 2019. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve. Could I have a second, please? Second. second. Okay, any discussion from the dais? Okay, roll call vote. Cecil? Commissioner Sanford? Yes. Commissioner Condor? Yes. Mayor Watson? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Magliner? Yes. Commissioner Smith Wright? Aye. Okay, thank you. Item 6B, please, sir. Ordinance 10 2019, an ordinance amending the annual budget for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2018, and ending June 30th, 2019 
and amending Ordinance 9-2018 to fund the budget con contingency and correct purchase order rollovers in the general fund to provide for purchase of 11 sets of body armor from the property recovery fund to receive federal justice assistant grant funds for purchase of breathalyzers, traffic data collector, and accident recon equipment in the JAG grant fund and to provide for convention center operations. Publicly read for approval on second reading this fourth day of June, 2019. Thank you, Councilor. I make a motion to approve. Could I have a second, please? Second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Condor? Yes. Mayor Watson? Yes. Mayor Protea Maglaner? Yes. Commissioner Smith Wright? Aye. Commissioner Sanford? Yes. Thank you, Councilor. Item 6C, please. Ordinance 11 2019, an ordinance annexing to the City of Owensboro certain unincorporated territory in the County of Davis adjoining the present boundary line of the city, being property currently owned by Gateway Land LLC and located at 2945 Highway 54, containing 2.361 acres more or less. Public read for approval this fourth day of June 2019. Thank you, Councillor. I make a motion to approve. Could I have a second, please? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. Roll call, please. Mayor Watson? Yes. Mayor Pro Tim Magliner? Yes. Commissioner Smith Wright? Aye. Commissioner Sanford? Yes. Commissioner Condor? Yes. Thank you. Item 6D, please. Mayor, if you have no objection, I'll go on and read the next ones as a, as a, a group as we did in the first meeting. You're the lawyer. Sorry. You're the lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think we were, I thought we had to do them individually. I was, well, I was going to read them individually. What do you mean? Are you, are you at 12 to 19, 2000? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yes. I am 60. Okay. Ordinance 12 2019 entitled An Ordinance de Declaring the City of Orangeboro's Intent to Annex to the City Certain Unincorporated Territory in the County of Davis. Joining the present boundary line of the city being property located at 2280 Tamarack Road containing 48.296 acres more or less. Public read for approval on second reading this fourth day of June 2019. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve. Could I have a second, please? Second. Okay, any discussion? Uh, Mayor, I'm confused. Okay. Um, were we going to discuss any of this? I thought we were going to. I'm giving you a chance to discuss it right okay, now. Okay, okay. Um, but if I could make a suggestion, Mayor, at the, the original first reading of these, I read all these together and considered them as a group, and okay. I would recommend that. I think it would be a lot clearer for the members. We need to vote on them individually. We have to, yes, that's correct. We have to vote on them individually. Okay. So you just going to go on and read them through and then go back and vote on them? Exactly, yes, sir. Ordinance 13-2019, an ordinance declaring the city of Owensboro intent to annex into the city certain unincorporated territory in the county of Davis adjoining the present boundary line of the city being property located at 4610 Gates Drive, 4514 Gates Drive, and 1621 Southtown Drive containing 52.238 acres more or less. Uh, ordinance 14-2019, an ordinance declaring the City of Owensboro's intent to annex into the city certain unincorporated territory in the County of Davis, adjoining the present boundary line of the city being property located at 1622 Southeastern Parkway containing 6.370 acres more or less. Ordinance 15-2019, an ordinance declaring the City of Owensboro's intent to annex into the city certain unincorporated territory. Yes, hang on just a second. Uh, Let's let's think this through a little bit. Once we've made a motion and a second, then we ought to sir. at least vote for there. And then I think we ought to vote on each one of them individually that's, that's fine. after we, you we, read them. We could do that. And that way we can have discussion here. Certainly. And I'll allow counsel to speak for the board. And you all can get your representatives to speak for all of you because we know you're against it. So we don't want to spend listen to everybody tell us how bad it is. So you'll get one person to speak on each ordinance and I don't care who it is. Well guess who's running the meeting? Not you. So you just you get one person to speak. That's it. And and you can speak for everybody. That's all that's the way it's gonna be. 
We're elected. Okay. And some of us can't elect. My wife become a city employee. When y'all pass this, that's what I want to know. And yes, you're out of you're out of order. You're out of order. Do you want to stay or do you want to leave? It don't matter to me. Me neither. So you're out of order. Okay. Now, back to 12-2019. 2019. Okay. We have a motion and a second. And any discussion from the dais? Do you have a discussion, Pam? Uh, Commissioner I just Ryan. I just want some clarification okay. as to how the negotiations have gone. Can, do you have something? Uh, Nate, do you want to speak to that? Because well, we've been negotiating and negotiating and negotiating, and uh, at the last I heard was that we're close with a, a decision that might make the teachers whole and at the same time create some extra revenue for the school system. But we haven't, you know, we kind of have it in principle, but we don't have anything in writing. Is that right, Counselor? Yes. Is that right? That's, I mean, that's the best I can tell. It comes in at 415 or what? What? Huh? what? Would you want to, Counselor, you go ahead and speak. And Mr. Mayor, not to correct, Your Honor, but I believe not just teachers, you mean Do I? district employees. There was a concern from the crowd about what? The, you mentioned teachers. I believe you. Oh, I meant district mean, employee. You know, right, employees. Yeah. But you're on, uh, Mr. Mayor. I think you fairly summarized the stage of negotiations. Yeah, they're they're really close, and uh, hopefully there'll be something in writing soon. I would assume, and that's kind of where we are right now, Commissioner. I just I just didn't think that these people had had the knowledge of that i felt like they had not you know they they came here and we were still negotiating and i think they need to know that we are working together and we are trying to get to a a, a, a point where it's good for everybody so and i just think that was important that we, we let them know that yeah we were going to let them know it after we got to that point i just they want to stop every. Well, you, they were they were out in the dark, and that's why they were so hostile. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Do I? I'm finished. You're finished. <laughs> okay. All right. May I have a comment, Mayor? Please. Sure, Commissioner Conn. Uh, thank you, Mayor. You're in in regards to some of the negotiations, I know there's been a lot of work on both sides from both the city and the uh, public school systems. And I truly believe, at the end of the day, that you'll see a win, win, win scenario play out here. That's what I believe we all should strive for, regardless. The first win being that all of the Davis County Public School employees are held whole. Second win, that there is additional monies that goes to the public school systems, maybe to buy the crayons that everybody wants to buy. And the third, where the city then has its growing tax base. I also wanted to make sure that I think uh, there's a little misconception about, for example, the today you had the uh, active shooter training that happened out at Meadowlands. And that is a great program that Sheriff Keith Kane, who is here, that places on and has been working on that for a long period of time. And I don't think that that would ever be looked at to be changed or hopefully enhanced by OPD. So all of these scenarios that are being worked out very hard, and it truly is, is at the end of the day that it becomes a win-win-win for all parties involved. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Okay. All right, we'll roll call vote now on 12-2019. On yes. Okay. Mayor Pro Tem Magliner? Yes. Commissioner Smithwright? Aye. Commissioner Sanford? Yes. Commissioner Condor? Yes. Mayor Watson? Yes. Okay, item 
E, 13-2019, Councilor. An ordinance, uh, ordinance 13 2019, an ordinance declaring the city of Owensboro's intent to annex into the city certain unincorporated territory in the county of Davis adjoining the present boundary line of the city, being properly located at 4610 and 4514 Gates Drive and 1621 South Town Drive, containing 52.238 acres more or less. Public read for approval on second reading this fourth day of June 2019. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve. Could I have a second, please? Second. Any discussion from the dais? Hearing none, on a uh, roll call. Commissioner Smith Wright? Aye. Commissioner Sanford? Yes. Commissioner Condor? Yes. Mayor Watson? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Magliner? Yes. <coughs> Item 6F, please. Ordinance 14-2019, an ordinance declaring the city of Owensboro's intent to annex into the city certain unincorporated territory into the county of Davis, adjoining the present boundary line of the city, being property located at 1622 Southeastern Parkway, containing 6.370 acres, more or less. Public read for approval on second reading this fourth day of June 2019. I'll make a motion to approve. Could I have a second, please? Second. Any uh, discussion? Hearing none, I'll uh, roll call. <laughs> Commissioner Sanford? Yes. Commissioner Condor? Yes. Mayor Watson? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Magliner? Yes. Commissioner Smith Wright? Aye. Item 6G, please. Ordinance 15 2019, an ordinance declaring the City of Owensboro's intent to annex into the city certain unincorporated territory in the County of Davis, adjoining the present boundary line of the city property located at 4255 New Hartford Road containing 31.683 acres more or less public grid for approval on second reading this fourth day of June 2019 okay I'll make a motion to approve second any discussion roll call please Commissioner Condor yes Mayor Watson yes Mayor Pro Tem Magliner yes Commissioner Smith Wright aye Commissioner Sanford yes item 6i please Ordinance 16-2019, an ordinance declaring the City of Owensboro's intent to annex into the city certain unincorporated territory in the County of Davis, adjoining the present boundary line of the city, being property located at 6000 Fairview Drive, containing 22.799 acres, more or less. Public read for approval on second reading this fourth day of June 2019. I make a motion to approve. Could second. Second, please. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll uh, roll call. Mayor Watson? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Magliner? Yes. Commissioner Smith Wright? Aye. Commissioner Sanford? Yes. Commissioner Condor? Yes. Councilor? Ordinance 17 2019, an ordinance declaring the City of Owensboro's intent to annex into the city certain unincorporated territory in the County of Davis, adjoining the present boundary line of the city being property located at 2909 Highway 54, containing 14.877 acres, more or less. Publicly read for approval on second reading this fourth day of June 2019. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve. Could I have a second, please? Second. Any discussion from the dais? Council? Yes, Commissioner smith Wright. I just wanted to say that before uh, coming here to this meeting today and finding out that we were in a in a position to uh, to negotiate and reach a settlement that I was going to vote against this but since we are working together then you know I appreciate the fact of all parties who have been doing the negotiation uh, uh, Superintendent Robbins and Nate and anyone else, Angela, whoever else was involved, I do appreciate you all working together because it's it's the best for all of us. Thank you. Council, you have any discussion on this? Mayor, if I could, before we go to uh, sure. Mr. Land, I want to read for the record that City Clerk Beth Cecil has certified the list of property owners to whom the notice of intent to annex was sent, those being the Davis County Board of Education, the Davis County School District Finance Corporation, the Davis County School Finance Corporation, and the Board of Education of Davis County, Kentucky. And the list of property owners is thereby pay, made a part of the official record of this meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 
sir. Sure. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the commission, uh, my name's Sean Land. I'm the attorney for the Davis County Board of Education. Um, I stood here two weeks ago and announced to you all that annexation simply was something that the Board of Education could not agree to at the expense of its employees. Um, that position remains unchanged. Uh, it is true there's been much negotiation uh, I have to say, prior to the votes uh, a few minutes ago, um, we were under, under the impression, based on the mayor's comments, that we would get to address the commission prior to uh, the votes. Unfortunately, that has not happened. Um, we've informed the city in writing of the serious flaws we believe that exist in each of the six annexation ordinances. Um, it's true that negotiations were fruitful up until this point, now that the matter has been voted. Uh, you know, I don't know how comfortable we are uh, that, that those negotiations will continue. We're very hopeful of that. But uh, And I'm here on behalf of the Board of Education. There are a number of employees here, but I, I'm specifically speaking on behalf of the school board. Uh, employees and the other members of the public may wish to address uh, subject uh, to the rules of ordinary rules of procedure of this commission um, separately. But I must say that the Board of Education is disappointed in the process tonight. Um, we were not given an opportunity to be heard, and um, we'll hope, hope for the best uh, as things progress. Thank you. Okay, if y'all have a spokesperson that would like to address the commission, I'd be glad to hear from them. Mr. Mayor. Mayor yes, Keith. Keith? <laughs> okay. It's a different. I thought you were going to forget about me, Mayor. No, I was afraid you had concealed carry going. We had, we had a <laughs> Thank you, uh, Commissioners, Mayor, and uh, Mr. Lynn. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you tonight. Uh, I do have to echo the Councilor's comments that I am concerned and disappointed that uh, this Commission decided to make a vote before they heard the, uh, the input uh, from the community at large here relevant to us. In respect for others that do wish to speak tonight, I will try to keep my remarks brief. However, I would ask that my remarks be made part of the official record of this meeting. You know, much has been said in the last couple of weeks concerning this proposed annexation, what it's about and what it's not about. And in doing so, I think some have, uh, albeit and hopefully inadvertently, have misled this community. It has been suggested, inferred, and stated that this annexation need, is, needed, is needed to enhance and increase the security of the schools affected with the implication that particularly this is particularly necessary because of recent school tragedies across this nation. Simply put, uh, this is simply not true. The Davis County Public School System and the Davis County Sheriff's Office has formed a partnership that is a model known and respected across this commonwealth and in fact was selected for presentation to the Kentucky Sheriff's Association five years ago. I should point out that my co-presenter in that forum was Superintendent of Davis County Public Schools, Matt Robbins. The active shooter response training that Commissioner Condra has already mentioned uh, was developed in partnership with the Davis County Public Schools and has now been presented to over 2,000 teachers with the Davis County Public Schools and their staff as well as several hundred with the Owensboro Public School System and their employees, and more than 200 teachers and staff from the Diocese of Owensboro, all at their request. You should also understand that Senate Bill 1, recently enacted by the Kentucky General Assembly, 
mandates certain active shooter preparation response measures be in place in every public school in Kentucky and that some of those procedures were made part of the school safety working group and incorporated into Senate Bill 1 after members of that working group, including its chair, Senator Max Wise, participated in our training here in Davis County. Indeed, Davis County Public Schools are recognized across the state and even this nation as leaders in this venue. And that is a direct result of our office's ongoing partnership with them. In fact, as has already been mentioned, two of those training sessions for new Davis County Public School teachers was conducted this very day at Meadowlands Elementary School. I was there all day today. I think all of you were invited via email to attend so that you could see for yourselves the value of this training and the depth of the partnership with Davis County Public School staff. I was disappointed that none of you were able to attend. I went into this much, <laughs> excuse me, I went into this much depth about our partnership with Davis County Public Schools, both in developing emergency response procedures and training our staff on them because I think they will tell you that our office is effectively and fully engaged in this process and has been for several years. The point I want to make that it is hard to believe that annexation will improve upon that program. Also, our school resource officers at both Davis County and Apollo High Schools regularly and routinely respond to nearby middle and elementary schools that will be affected by this annexation, reducing the response time of patrol deputies to those schools. And finally, it's important for you to understand that in the God forbid event of an active shooter, every, every law enforcement officer, regardless of the agency, duty status, who hears that call is immediately gonna respond jurisdictions, turf considerations, different color uniforms, none of that's gonna matter. In fact, at the Marshall County High School shooting in January of 2018, then Sheriff Kenneth Byers told me that within minutes of the 911 call, that there were over 100 first responders on the scene, including local, state, and federal agencies. Let me be clear, I am not suggesting annexation would result in a lesser degree of police delivery services, not at all. I have tremendous respect for the Owensboro Police Department and all of their officers, and I enjoy an excellent and working relationship under the leadership of Chief Elam, who's here with us tonight. My point is an alleged need for increased security of the affected schools should not be used to validate this action. No one is buying that, and you shouldn't be selling it because it's misleading and it's untrue. Finally, allow me one additional moment of personal privilege. I know all of you on this commission, you're all friends of mine. And I know you to be honorable people that want what's the best for this community. But Mayor, as you so eloquently and obviously heartfelt prayed, you prayed for all of this community. And this community involves more people than to live inside the incorporated city limits of Owensboro, some of whom will be negatively impacted by this annexation. Should this action, should this action, ultimately be determined to be legal, doesn't necessarily mean it's the right thing to do. Is annexation truly necessary? Who will it benefit and who will it hurt? I trust you'll give these questions serious consideration as you move forward. But one thing I hope you fully understand at this point is that there is no basis for claiming that improved safety or security is either a reason for or a benefit of annexing these county schools. Thank you for your time and allowing me to speak. City Manager, I believe you have a response of some sort. I, I, I do have some comments, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, just briefly, so as has been stated before, 
we've had, uh, the superintendent and I have had great conversations over the last two weeks. We've made great strides. Frankly, I feel we're very close to an agreement that again would make teachers and employees of the board whole. Uh, and we do intend to continue to negotiate. And frankly, I think considering how close we are, we can finish that very, very rapidly. Uh, and I, I'm hopeful you feel the same, sir. Uh, so that is our intent. Uh, and I, I believe that is realistic and that is my expectation. Chief. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioners. You're welcome. I'm Dwayne Smothers, Chief of the Davis County Fire Department. I was compelled to to dispute some of the com commissioners' notions in, from your previous discussions about the county's emergency service providers. Uh, they were deemed somehow inferior to those that the city of Owensboro currently provide. Well, the location of the fire stations was noted. However, fire apparatus are constantly moving across the areas. Volunteer firefighters, they live in very close proximity to these facilities. And I agree that the Owensboro Fire Department does a fantastic job providing suppression, medical and rescue services. But the Davis County Fire Service as a whole provides the same level of response through their two manned career stations, 12 volunteer stations, approximately 300 volunteer uh, firefighters. The Davis County Fire Service trains tirelessly and remains abreast of all the latest developments as it relates to all the aspects of emergency services. Re we reviewed the run totals from the county school's property in, in question over the last five years. The Davis County Fire Service responded to 189 calls of service to these locations. This number breaks down into two call types, fire suppression and medical assistance. The fire suppression was 54 calls, that's 29%. 52 of those 54 calls were automatic fire alarms that deemed false alarms. Two calls were substantiated and were actually a small emergencies. The medical assistance was 135 calls, which is 71% of the runs. These calls range Say that from again, from, please. Excuse me? Say that last thing again. I, you lost me. The medical calls. Medical were, calls, okay. I'm medical, sorry. yes. 135 calls, 71% of those calls. These calls range from traumatic injuries, cardiac emergencies, OB emergencies, allergic reactions, to anything in between. The reason these numbers are important is because most people are unaware that the Davis County Fire Department is the only fire department in the region that provides around the clock advanced life support services. The career stations employ 29 EMTs and nine of these are highly trained and skilled paramedics who have extensive training and all the necessary equipment to provide ALS service or advanced life support service on every call for service. So in reality, annexation of these properties will actually reduce the services that they currently enjoy. So lastly, please don't use emergency services as your political pawn in game of chess. Thank you. Yes, sir. State your name and address for the record, please. Good evening, Mayor Watson and Commissioners. Mm -hmm. My name is Kevin Lowe, and I reside at 3810 Cross Creek Trail. I want to thank you, Commissioner Condor, for returning my call uh, and speaking with me earlier. Uh, my wife works at, as a teacher at Highland Elementary, and I get to work at Meadowlands Elementary as the principal. I come to you tonight to speak in opposition to the proposed annexation. I speak in opposition to this for several reasons. First, I speak because it will hurt children. As educators, we filter everything we do around what's best for kids. This annexation is not what's best for kids. The annexation will cause possible confusion among first responders, as you just heard. Do not play with the safety and lives of my children because of money. Um, the annexation will not benefit the employees at the proposed building and will unfairly take away their income. In addition, this will place staff not wanting to work at some buildings because they have higher taxes Finally, to say a tax on these educators to pay for the pensions of other employees infuriates many. Educators are already being beaten up from our state government. We thought we would be embraced by our local government. However, it does not feel that way, especially this evening. So what I would like for you to remember tonight 
as you've already voted, however, is that your decisions and actions affect real people. And these faces, I first show you some of our lunchroom staff who are heroes each day, but also pay out of their own pockets for student lunch accounts that are overdue many times throughout the year. These amazing ladies will be pinched even harder by paying unnecessary taxes. The next people that I want to show you is a mom and her two sons, Heath and Hayden. You see, Heath and Hayden lost their father a few years ago to health issues. Heath and Hayden's mother is a single mom who, like many courageous single moms, do whatever it takes to make ends meet. She provides for her sons everything they need in life. However, there are many nights she probably stays up worrying about the future and ensuring that they have enough income for their needs. Please remember these two boys as you vote. The next real person your decision affects is Rosemary. Rosemary is a teacher who has been battling cancer over the last several years with only one income. This unnecessary annexation will force her to deal with a loss of income now that she certainly wasn't ex expecting or deserve. Please remember Rosemary when you vote tonight. The next person is Heather and her husband Todd, who found out in March that he has a cancerous tumor that required emergency surgery and has been extensive and has began extensive chemo treatments when he is able to. They are facing insurmountable medical bills at close to if not over a half a million dollars. Your decisions tonight have and will make their wounds even deeper and force them to have more sleepless nights worrying about where their income will come from. Please remember Heather and Todd as you have voted tonight. These next two faces have overcome insurmountable odds and placed in a situation no one would ever want to think of being in. This young boy, Noah, father to suicide recently. This young boy Noah wakes up every day to a strong and courageous mother who has not only lost her husband and the father of her child but now will possibly face more loss of income due to your actions tonight. Yes your actions tonight will cause more grief and heartache for this family and ultimately to this young boy. Please remember Noah as you voted tonight. There are countless other stories just like the ones I briefly mentioned all across Davis County. I beg of you as our elected officials to put these faces in your mind as you've made your decisions. I also implore you to possibly table this issue until another meeting, until a resolution has been reached among different organizations. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. I believe we're ready to roll call vote. Commissioner Sanford. Um, I don't think the situation is us against you guys. In the past few days, we have made a lot of ground trying to fix this situation where everybody can win. I've had great discussions with uh, uh, Matt over here, Dale Stewart, who was a teacher of mine. Uh, the, the numbers that I'm looking at looks like it can make you guys whole and have extra money for the school board to do with what you want. Uh, we're very close. Our staff has worked tirelessly because we've been pushing them and pushing them and pushing them to get this done for you guys. Uh, and I'm not going to stop until I can get this thing done, okay? So it's, it's, not, it, it's not us against you. We're one community. We had great discussions last night and today. And working together, we can get this thing done and solved it. And it can be a win for everybody if you just give us a little time and be patient. Uh, um, please, 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 we, please. Go ahead, Jeff. We have to move the ball forward to get to the negotiation. It has to go that way. I tried to go the other way. I couldn't. This is the only way I can get it done. And I explained that to Matt earlier, and he understood. So that's where we're at. So I, we are still working on this, and we're going to get it done one way or another. We're going to try to get this thing done for you guys. So that's, I just wanted to uh, convey myself to you. Superintendent, do you have something you'd like to add? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the commission, uh, I think what our employees want to hear is they want to hear from me. And uh, what I can tell them is this. We have made uh, considerable progress over the last four or five hours. Now, are we home yet? No, we're not. That's why the commission had to proceed to do what they chose to do tonight. And that's, that's the commission's decision. I respect that. However, 
what has been expressed to me is in good faith. We will proceed forth again tomorrow. All in the conditions, as exactly as I've told you, I've communicated to you as well and as best as I know how. And that is, I'm doing my best to make sure you're not impacted by this. And that'll be the promise that I make to you. Okay. Let's Okay, we'll have a roll call vote now, City Clerk, please. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ms. Mann. Mayor Pro Tem Magliner. Yes. Commissioner Smith Wright. Aye. Commissioner Sanford. Yes. Commissioner Conder. Yes. Mayor Watson. Yes. Thank you. There are no new ordinances at first reading seven. Item eight is a municipal order. Counselor. Municipal Order 17-2019, a municipal order authorizing and directing the mayor to execute an application for a fiscal year 2019 state homeland security grant through the Kentucky Office of Homeland Security in the amount of $12,300, the proceeds of which will be utilized by the City of Owensboro Fire Department to purchase confined space rescue hardline communications equipment, no matches required, introduced at public writ for approval this fourth day of June 2019. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve. Could I have a second, please? Second. City Manager, you have anything to add? No additional comments, Mayor. Okay. Uh, any discussion from the dais? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Item 9, City Manager item. Thank you, Mayor. We have the following personnel appointments tonight. Deidre Daly, regular full-time non-civil service appointment to telecommunicator with the police department. Jessica Pierce, full-time regular non-civil service appointment to lead telecommunicator with the police department. Ronnie Ferguson, regular full-time non-civil service appointment to sanitation manager, effective June 10th. Marvin Ammons, probationary full-time non-civil service appointment to public works driver with the public works department, effective June 10th. Kevin Lang, Jr., probationary full-time non-civil service appointment to police officer, effective July 1. Kenneth Rideout and Mark Hammonds, probationary full-time non-civil service appointment to police officer, effective July 1. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve. Could I have a second, please? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. City Manager comments, 9B. No comments tonight, Mayor. Communication from elected officials. Commissioner Smith Wright. Mayor, I, uh, the only thing I have to say is that, you know, I just hope that, as I've said before, that, that we can work this out and that uh, we'll move forward. Thank you. Commissioner Pro Tem Maglinger. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I had a couple of questions I wanted to ask Nate. And, you know, when you very first started talking with the board, uh, was your first offer to take care of all of the employees so they're not out any expense? Yes, sir, it was. was did they uh, refuse that offer? Uh, the Yes. Board, okay. I just, okay, that's all I got. Thank you. Commissioner Sanford. Commissioner Sanford. Uh, no comment. That was going below the bail. Yeah, that that was that was Commissioner Condor. One slight comment, Mayor. Um, last night November. in Atlanta, uh, Charlotte Burton of Owensboro was awarded the national board winner, uh, board member of CASA, that's Court Appointed Special Advocate for Children. Charlotte has been advocating for children that have been abused, neglected uh, in our community for well over 25 years. And to receive that honor for Owensboro and Davis County is an absolute awesome, awesome thing to see happen to a true servant leader that gives every day of her time and of her talent, of her treasure, especially back to children. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Open public forum, item 11. Members of the audience are invited to address the city commission on any matter of public concern that was not on tonight's agenda. Commit. Comments are limited to issues within the scope and responsibility of the commission. Commission meetings are held to, protect, to conduct city business for the benefit of Orangeboro citizens. 
this time, if anyone wishes to address the commission and make their way to the podium to be recognized, speakers must state their name and address for the clerk's record and limit their comments to three minutes or less. Okay. Hello, God man. bless you. Yes, sir. My name is Larry King. I live at 3491 Manowar Loop North. Um, I'm here in support of my daughter-in-law and all her friends and family that teach. And what I got out of this tonight was how come there was no discussion before you all brought this up to vote? Seems like you just jammed it down everybody's throat. And now you're telling them that, you know, after the fact that you're working on something that's going to benefit the teachers. Well, Larry, Why? do you think there's anybody in here that's not going to tell us the same story that you're against it? I mean, we understand that. I mean, that's th and th that's why it's. Isn't it customary to get another input from we the public? We had it on the first reading. I mean, I guarantee you I understand it. Yeah. So, you know, so I, I'm just trying to move this along. I knew what was going on, and I thought it's best to go ahead and calm down all this hatred between each other. I mean, well, it, 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 seems, it seems to me a lot of the hatreds come up there because he's yeah, been pretty That's what, that's what you would say. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. My name is Laura Wimsett. I live at 2609 Wisteria Gardens. I want to thank Commissioner Condor for his pleasant call this morning. I also wish to thank him for recognizing Charlotte Burden for her untiring support of the children in our community who most need that support and assistance. And to tell you all that I am honored to be a part of a group of people who do that every single day. And I trust, ladies and gentlemen, that your support for these people would be the same as it is for Ms. Burden. Thank you. Great, great. Yes, ma'am. My name is Gail Edmonds and I live at 2411 Davis Street. And I stand before you to listen to everything that's said and heard. But I wonder, out of good faith, you haven't led us to be in good faith. When you have dibs thrown us underneath, you say things that's not true. But then how can we as employees trust you when you cram the vote down our throats and accept us to believe and trust in you? We voted you in these seats. So we ought to be able to trust you in these seats with our livelihood. I guarantee you, if you take my salary and try to live off of it, you would be standing on the same side I'm standing on. On the same side I'm standing on. Because you wouldn't be able to do it. Because we are in survival mode, trying to make it, trying to raise family. Some of us are working two and three jobs trying to survive. You know, I'm, this is real talk. Do These you, are uh, real people. Do you, is your, do you think your, this, your issues are with the city tax? Absolutely. Can I finish, please? Are they with the city taxpayers or with your employer? It's with you trying to take okay, more so, from me. Okay. So, so where does that fall right, at? I, that's, that's all I wanted to know. You know, where does that fall at? You're trying to take from me when we don't have, you know what? I love my job. I love my kids, because if I didn't, I wouldn't be standing here at 60 years old confessing how much I love my job and how much I want to stay on my job. Because if it wasn't for this job and loving my kids, I wouldn't stay here because I couldn't live off of this. But it's a, a job I pick to choose to do. Okay. And Thank I pick you. it with my heart and I love what I do. But I'm going to stand. One thing I know in this life, you can stand for something or run for anything. And I stand on what this school stands for. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Could I have a second, please? Second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? We are adjourned.